Well, hello there, and welcome to Christine's Kitchen, a show that does not exist and probably never will. I'm here to show off a weird hobby I have. Um, so I guess let's just get right to it. So sometime over the last few years, a lot of the meals I made started to look like this after I was done preparing them, which uh, you can see this is called fog soup. It's a kind of potato soup, and you can see it's completely dry, not the usual case for soup. Um, and that is because it is all made out of dehydrated ingredients, but the advantage is you can just add hot water and it'll work. But that's not all. I've also made a large variety of other types of things. And the great thing about doing this is you can travel with this food and like you can bring like a bag of this with you on a trip, stick it in your backpack, that's all you need to eat. You're a vegetarian, you have special food requirements, whatever. Maybe you're on a diet, you don't want to have to deal with all the uncertainty of eating food on the go, you can just eat this food. Maybe you're very picky, you can also just make things in large bulk amounts. So, here I have a variety of foods that I have made. Here is a chana masala, here is a, uh, more of that fog soup stuff, more of the fog soup stuff. Here is a chili that I made. And a chili mac. And, you know, to make one of these things, all you really do is you put it in a container. And, for example, now here's one I call nuclear mac because it uses that terrifyingly yellow, like, nuclear-colored mac and cheese powder. Um, and, um, and then you just add hot water and wait a few minutes, and then you're ready to go. So, come over here, ignore these tea bags sitting there on the counter. You didn't see that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I could just add hot water to this, but uh, I'm going to actually show you, I'm going to make this in my preferred way of making these things. So this, this container is pretty neat um, because uh, this is a like a thermos container for like people who are on the go, usually on camping trips. Uh, here's a cool thing. So, you know, you can open it, put your food in there. So let's choose the chili. How about that? And I'm doing this all one-handed because I... I didn't get a tripod or anything. I'll hunt in that with my teeth. Um, there we go. And since I'm doing a very bad job doing this one-handed, uh, just gonna dump that all in there. This show was done off the cuff because I was bored. And it is impossible to put things in containers when you're doing things one-handed if you are as bad at doing things as I am. So anyway, I'm gonna... Pour some hot water in here, just enough to cover. That's plenty. And in about 15 minutes, after I close this, you'll have a nice hot meal. Now, I'm gonna have to stop this for a sec. Okay, starting it back up. So this actually unscrews. And what you can see in here is that there is a spoon that you can actually unfold. If you bring this with you on a trip, well, it's actually you just have some sort of thermos for keeping your liquid in. And something like this. This is really all you need. And you can make so many types of things this way. How do you learn how to make meals like this, you ask? So as I said, we'll give it about, probably about 12 minutes. Um, so I'll set the timer on my stove, which you can see is blinking because I never bothered to set it after the, uh, no, not the clock. Just a timer. I'll set it for 12 minutes. Start time. Um, since I never bothered to, you know, set the time after the power went out last. But, you know, you can also use something like this. So for Morgan, who really enjoys mac and cheese, and this nuclear mac in particular, it's going to fill that up to there and mix it up. And I'll cover that. It'll also be plenty good. Now... How do you get ingredients to make things like this? How do you learn these skills? Well, the answer is you visit a variety of blogs spanning the entire American political culture, from left-wing backpacking granola eating hippies to um, right-wing survivalists who have caches of guns um, and are probably waiting for uh, something that I don't agree with politically to happen. Um, and, you know, you just 
cross that whole span of society and view all of their tricks on how to be able to do dehydrated meals, and you just absorb all that information. So for example, in this chana masala, uh, you can see some dehydrated chickpeas in there. You can also see some rice. The rice I bought, it's already par parboiled rice, basically the instant rice you can buy. Um, this has some uh, coconut milk in it. It has some chili powder. It's got some dehydrated uh, chickpeas. And the chickpeas, they're not dehydrated like dry, the way that you would get them from like a dry bag of uncooked um, uh, chickpeas, right? Uh, instead, they're actually fully cooked and then they're dehydrated. Um, so that's parboiling it. And so I have a wicked large dehydrator in here. Um, and I have kind of a terrifying number of like powdered things. So here are some powdered dairy products largely, um, because I was experimenting with those, including goat milk. And yes, you can get butter in powdered form. Um, not only that, but what else have I dehydrated? Well, so you can also, some, some things are better gotten, um, uh, like peas do not rehydrate well if you just dehydrate them yourself. Um, lots of other vegetables do great, but peas do not. So what I actually do is I buy the uh, freeze-dried peas, and I buy them online. Um, but there is a shocking number of things that you can dehydrate or buy online. You know what this is? Well, this is honey powder, granulated honey powder. You didn't maybe think you could get that. Molasses powder. It's just kind of fascinating what you can get. Um, I mean, that, that's not too shocking that you can get uh, corn in that way. And my God, you buy this stuff and you can get it in such huge qualities. This is powdered tomato. So like the weird thing about making this stuff is like the way you make it is like you can figure out a recipe by like experimenting and combining the ingredients. So what I usually do is I just like combine some ingredients that I think resemble the ingredients that I would have had in the meal with things that are dehydrated and ready to go. So you can do pasta even, like what you do is you fully cook the pasta and then you dehydrate it, you know, and then the dehydrator, and then uh, then you've got instant quick cook pasta. Um, and then, you know, you dehydrate your whatever other ingredients and, or you buy freeze dried things if they're things that need to go faster. And then you basically just kind of figure out, um, like I just get like a cup of something um, and I just put the ingredients in roughly the proportions I think that they should be. And then I uh, add hot water and maybe throw it in the microwave to like uh, basically accelerate the process if I'm experimenting. And then, yeah, then you, you just see whether or not it works. And then you get the general proportions of things. And then the wild thing is that cooking this stuff is simply mixing it together in a mixing bowl, which means cooking a larger portion of it just means getting a giant ass cookie uh, mixing bowl just mixing multiplying the amount of ingredients that you think is supposed to have and then just m mixing it together and then that's how i can make this giant ass amount of fog soup stuff in like no more work than it would have taken otherwise and like i take some shortcuts so like this is like to make this creamy potato soup it's a bunch of dehydrated vegetables have in here in various kinds but there's there's also there's also the potato powder that you can get, like um, like the instant mashed potatoes. And that's great for this. Like, it's maybe questionable some of the preservatives that are in there. I don't know. Like, I tried reading up on one of them, and it seemed a little, a little disturbing. But, you know, whatever. Um, most of the things, though, that you dehydrate yourself or that you can buy dehydrated, like, instant rice is actually surprisingly fine. Um, like as in terms of, you know, it's quality and this, like, look, here's dehydrated cabbage. I have a ton of dehydrated cabbage here. What did I do? I was too lazy to shred this cabbage myself. I just bought a bunch of, um, shit, what do you call it? Uh, uh, what is that thing that people love that has shredded cabbage and mayonnaise that I think is disgusting? That thing, right? You know, they've got the mix for that in the coleslaw. That's the thing. Why do people make coleslaw with mayonnaise? You should make it with vinegar. I firmly believe this. Anyway, so um, people have, they have coleslaw mix you can have in stores. So you can just take that and just load it into your dehydrator and then like do that in bulk. Now, like I gotta say, if you're gonna do this stuff and do dehydrating, you can do de dehydrating in the oven. Like you can set your temperature at like something really low. Like mine, mine let's see how low it can go. 
Um, I think it goes down to like one, no, not one something, like something low 200s. Uh, wow, well, yeah, actually it's going all the way down to 170. But my dehydrator can go down to like 95 or whatever. And so like at like, um, depending on the temperature you go at is how fast it dehydrates, but also certain things will not dehydrate as well. Unless, and like you can get those like, um, cheap dehydrators or like the very 90s style dehydrators, but I really like the Excalibur. Like if you're going to go into this, I recommend the Excalibur. It's got like trays, pull out. You can just load a ton of food on there. And like, I went all out. I had the big one. I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of weird about this. Um, and yeah, like I've just got like tons of weird things. Sometimes I just find something and I'm like, what can I do with this weird thing of fermented greens? Bet I can do something interesting with that. Anyway. Oh, yeah. Um, if you're vegetarian, uh, TVP granules are fucking dope. Those things make a very convincing... Um, dehydrated bell peppers. Uh, they, they make a very convincing, uh, like, kind of ground beef type thing. But also here, look, these are dehydrated chickpeas. So what you can see is they look kind of split. Um, and, and that's because, you know, they were fully cooked and then they're dehydrated and I de and like, if you dehydrate them at a really low temperature, they won't split like this, but I kind of like it when they split because then it means that they kind of break apart and get mushy and like kind of incorporate with the sauce really well. Anyway, that's it for ingredients. Um, and also kind of my technique and also kind of rambling. I also use a shit ton of these. They are like the silica gel packets. Um, you can reuse them, um, take all the silica gel and... Uh, I basically just, um, but you get, you can basically dehydrate them again if you want, or you can just buy a bunch of silica gel packets and not think about what you are doing. Um, you know, the choice is yours. Uh, dehydrated spinach. Anyway, this is boring as fuck. The point is you can dehydrate and make lots of things. Ooh, it's three minutes. So like, let's just take a look at we, where we are with this chili. Um, all right starting to resemble a chili. There we go. Like something you might choose to eat. It's terrible under that light. Let's go over here. It'll look much better. Ah, oh, that looks much better. A much more reasonable light. More reasonable light for a reasonable person. And so I'm gonna try this chili. Mmm. That was enough time. That was fucking delicious. Mmm. That's great. Anyway, that's a meal. You know? And you can just have a huge variety of things. Just have them on little baggies that you carry with you. And then you can be the weirdo at the conference that's like, no thanks, I brought my own meal. Can you just like, give me some hot water? And then, you know, I'm all set to go. And then conference people aren't very happy, but they're not gonna not give you hot water and you've got a thermos and you've got your own food, you know? So it's perfect. It's great, amazing, wonderful. And you're not being antisocial. You're spending time talking with people. Nobody's upset at you. Anyway. I love doing it. Uh, you can do it in airports, not have to get ridiculous ass airport food. Um, but anyway, that's the whole damn thing. Ooh, let's see what let's see where this is at. All right. So this one I did it in the glass container, so it's not gonna go. It doesn't retain heat as well, and it also has uh, it has the noodles in it, which take a little bit longer. But let's see where it's at. So you can see this broccoli is fairly well rehydrated actually, and it's got the the peas, which are doing great. And it's got the pasta, which is rehydrated really well. Um, uh, actually, this is probably not done. I'll probably use a few more minutes. You know, I could put it in the microwave to accelerate it if I wanted. Um, but anyway, you get the idea. That's it. That's my video. That's uh, all about cooking while not cooking. There you go.